MAGA warfare continues. Biden and the DOJ have declared war on a whole number of Trump allies, deputies, people who are, I guess, even closely related to Donald Trump, are now in the crosshairs of the FBI and the DOJ. We learn that Mike Lindell, the purveyor of sleep, the CEO of MyPillow, the man who just helps large portions of America rest serenely and peacefully every night, got raided by the FBI. He was sitting there at a Hardee's about to go on a hunting trip, and FBI agents came crashing in to the front of the Hardee's, the drive-thru, as he's sitting there peacefully trying to just get a nice meal. And so we've got two clips from Mr. Lindell himself. Before we take a look at the documents that he shared with some news media, we've got some backstory, we've got some speculation about whether this is part of an ongoing raid that was already revealed some time ago. And then we've got reaction, including crime scene photos that we learned uh, came out from the FBI. We'll take a look at those here at the end of this segment. But first, let's hear from the man himself, Mike Lindell. The CEO of MyPillow is out now telling us exactly what happened. Here he is. Today, the FBI, uh, you're going to hear this, and you're probably already hearing it in the news. The FBI came after me and took my phone. They surrounded me at a Hardee's and uh, took my phone that I run all my business, everything with. Um, um, they could have just, what we've done is weaponize the FBI. Um, it's yeah. disgusting. I don't have a computer. Everything I do have that phone, everything was on there. And, uh, um, and they told me not to tell anybody. Here's an order not to. Now you see that order from the FBI saying, don't tell anybody. And we actually have a copy of that. So it looks exactly like that. We're gonna take a look at that in a minute, but you see the seal, you see the date on there, and we're gonna see what that actually says in a minute. But Mike Lindell, you know, he looks a little bit sort of, you know, deflated a little bit, not defeated, but deflated. He just, you know, they took my phone. It's literally everything's on there. You know, it's my whole business is on there. And uh, it's just a big problem. You know, it's really a, not a cool thing. You know, some people out there, I think just sort of think that when the FBI comes by and they just seize your property, that it's like getting a traffic ticket or something, like it's something minor. It's a horrendous violation of somebody's property rights. It has to be done for the utmost important reasons in this country. That's why we go through all these procedures of having warrants and judges and probable cause and all this stuff. When the standard for these things drops to now prosecuting and criminalizing what should be perfectly protected speech, like participating in an election, questioning the election, questioning the candidates, the process, all that's perfectly legitimate. To now start to, to declare that there are you know, criminalities here just such that you can go and raid people and take their phones as though it's just like handing out a report card or something, right? It's a seizure of somebody's private property. And in this case, it is directly interfering with a giant business that employs people all over the country that delivers very nice, soft, restful pillows all across the fruited plains of America. So let's check back in with Mr. Lindell. Don't tell anybody, okay, I won't. <laughs> well, I am, so there you go. So he is telling us, and that was an earlier video. He detailed more of the story back on his show. Here is Mike Lindell on the Lindell Report, who just got raided by the FBI, had a cell phone seized. Here he is communicating a little bit more about the details about him being invaded at a Hardee's. Well, everybody, welcome to the Lindell Report. And uh, I guess uh, I have my own breaking news tonight. Um, we, uh, this afternoon, I was, uh, I went down uh, hunting in Iowa for the early teal season with my friend this morning at 4 a.m. We got up, headed down to Iowa. We are coming back and, uh, we were we stopped to get go through a Hardee's in Mankato, where I was born in Mankato, Minnesota, and cars pulled up in front of us, to the side of us, and behind us. And I said, um, "These are either bad guys or the FBI." Well, it turns out they were the FBI. FBI. And that is not a good feeling to have your vehicle surrounded by federal agents demanding this, that, or the other. And you can see how sort of insulting it is, right? How condescending it is to just go, oh, there he is. He's going to get a hamburger. Oh, we're just going to go now and just get him, everybody. And why, right? Because they're going to say, well, he might delete his evidence or he might uh, do something with the cell phone or flush it down the toilet, right? Dispose of the evidence. And they don't want that to happen. So they're going to go and seize it 
when he is least expecting it. So Mike Lindell out on a hunting trip getting raided by the FBI. He did share some documents with the media. We do have those pulled up. Let's take a quick look at these. Mike Lindell ordered by subpoena to testify before a grand jury. You can see these documents coming out of the United States District Court for the District of Colorado. Oh, we see Colorado there. So this emanating out of that jurisdiction. It says, to Mike Lindell, the subpoena to testify before a grand jury is not about the person. You see that box is not checked. It's really about the documents and the objects. It says, to Mr. Michael J. Lindell, you are commanded to appear in the United States District Court at the time, date, and place shown below to testify before the court's grand jury. When you arrive, you must remain at the court until a judge or a court officer allows you to leave. Where? United States District Court, Grand Junction, Colorado, 81501. And so Mr. Lindell, right, uh, obviously somebody who has a big business, but I'm sure he's got some funding to have his uh, attorneys deal with this and you know to, to uh, pick up and leave and sort of go to Colorado. But for anybody else, right, think about the expenses, think about the time. Think of, and it's, it's not like Mike Lindell's time is insignificant, right? He may have been on a hunting trip, but I'm sure he's quite busy to manage an organization like he manages and to produce what he produces. It's a big job. So now he's got just extra time to just take off and go and jump and attend a court proceeding because some judge signed off on an order somewhere. Date and time, this is ordered 11-3-2022 at 8 a.m. And so, right, Mike Lindell may be able to weather this storm, but many other people can't. Many other people can't just pick up and fly from their home state to Colorado because some judge signed off on a document. It says here, you must also bring with you the following documents, either electronically stored information or objects, and they don't give us any details on that, but they say, see the attachment, which we'll take a look at. This was signed off on September 7, 2022, clerk of the court from the Colorado court. Signature from the deputy clerk is from N. Richards over there. The name, the address, and the telephone number of the U.S. attorney who actually filed the request for the subpoena is this fellow. Aaron Tittlebaum is here from the Assistant United States Attorney's Office. And we have another scan from two additional pages, but he is out of the Denver, Colorado office. The cover sheet of this document delivered to Mike Lindell comes from the U.S. Department of Justice out of the District of Colorado, dated September 7th. It's regarding a grand jury subpoena, number 22-105. It says, Dear Subpoena Recipient, meaning Mike. Hey, Mike. They say, An official criminal investigation of a suspected felony is being conducted by an agency of the United States and a federal grand jury in the District of Colorado. As a subpoena recipient, you are not under an obligation of secrecy. However, we request that you do not disclose the existence of this subpoena for an indefinite period of time. You have no legal obligation to stay silent, but we do ask that you do that with the implied veiled threat that if you don't do that, then maybe there will be some consequences. You know, you wouldn't want to be prosecuted for a crime by the same U.S. attorney, would you? And if you are uncooperative with him now during the initial investigation, maybe he doesn't give you such a good plea deal later down the road. You know, if you don't sort of be cooperative at this moment during this investigation, in fact, maybe he would char decides to charge you if you disclose this subpoena. You're not required to disclose it or to not disclose it. But if you do, you're, you're going to hurt my work. You know that, right? He writes, although the law does not require non-disclosure unless there's a court order that's issued, we believe that the impact of any disclosure could be detrimental to the investigation. And so Mike Lindell obviously doesn't care. They say, can you please not tell anybody about our grossly inappropriate criminal prosecutions of our political enemies. Can you please just keep that on the down low between you and us? Mike Lindell said, no, uh, no. He made several videos immediately. Hold on a minute. I'm going to go on the Mike Lindell report and I'm going to detail the whole thing. 
several videos. He's making it known for all of us so that we can all see this stuff because the U.S. Attorney's Office doesn't want you to know about it. And the veiled threat continues now that Mike Lindell has made it known. Is he jeopardizing their investigation? Is he doing something that's detrimental to the U.S. Attorney's Office? My goodness, does that make him an insurrectionist? Maybe we should all just... Give up. This continues, it says, if you do not believe that you can comply with this request, please notify the undersigned assistant U.S. attorney before you disclose the assistance of this subpoena. Thank you. Sincerely, Andrew Tittlebaum, assistant United States attorney. Right. So now that Mike Lindell has made it available now, now I guess maybe he's going to be penalized for it. Maybe maybe they decide to, in fact, charge him because of this. Now, my understanding is Mr. Lindell talked to his lawyers about not disclosing the phone or not handing it over. And they advised him, uh, you got a subpoena, you got to do it. And so I'm guessing that this U.S. attorney knew that he was going to disclose it before he did. But what is going to be harmed? Aren't you tired of this garbage Every single one of these investigations you can't talk about. National security implications. Oh, it's confidential. Oh, America's going to melt down. All of our eyeballs are going to melt out of our sockets as soon as anybody in the public knows what we all have been seeing as is a corrupt, degraded, disgusting FBI operating with impunity for years now. We have questions about what they're doing. But if you disclose it, <laughs> oof, not good for you. It might come back to really bite you in the butt. Signed by Andrew Tittlebaum, United States Attorney. Now, here is the sealed order of the court. It says United States District Court. This comes out of the District of Minnesota, which is where he was. So the subpoena is initiated out of Colorado, but they get the warrant out of the jurisdiction of Minnesota. So the subpoena is issued there. They transfer it over there. They say, oh, your jurisdiction has, your court has the jurisdiction over Minnesota, that's where Mr. Lindell is. So after the application is submitted by the prosecutor, it goes here. In the matter of the search of a person located in the District of Minnesota, described in the attachment for the items described in attachment B, sealed by order of the court, now we have a case docket that we can follow. It says search and seizure warrant. As to... Whom is this addressed? It says any authorized law enforcement officer, you now have authority by virtue of the court to go seize these materials. They tell us an application by a federal law enforcement officer or an attorney for the government requests the search of the following person or property located in Minnesota. See attachment A, which is incorporated here, which we do not have. We do not have a copy of that. Or it says here, the person or property to be searched is believed to conceal. What? What are they supposed to conceal? We don't see that. Attachment B. Not attached. It says, I find that the affidavit submitted here and the recorded testimony do establish probable cause to search and seize the person or property. You're commanded to execute this search warrant on or before September 21st. They have 14 days to do it. This was signed off on September 7th. So they had plenty of time to do it. There was no urgency. They didn't need to get them at a Hardee's, but they did it anyways. Executed in the daytime between 6 a.m. or 10 p.m. Saying the officer executing this warrant or an officer present during the warrant must prepare and present an inventory as required by law and promptly return this warrant and the inventory back to the judge. Signed out of Minneapolis, Minnesota by the magistrate judge Tony Lang authorizing the seizure of Mike Lindell's phone. And so we don't see any of the attachments. And until this case is unsealed or until the judge orders the unsealing, this is sort of deja vu with what we already went through with Donald Trump, right? We saw very much the same, the cover sheets, the face sheets of all these documents. But it wasn't until we got a big fight over the affidavit that we started to see more of what was behind the scenes. So Mr. Lindell has released some information. We do have identities of U.S. attorneys who are prosecuting these crimes. The people who are delivering subpoenas for all of Trump's allies appear to be just continuing to operate entirely unfettered. But the Washington Post is, of course, reporting on this as well. Let's see if they can fill in any gaps for us. They say that 
The FBI seized his phone. They call him an election denier. They say they served him when he was at a drive through area of a Hardee's restaurant. That was in Minnesota. Lindell said the agents questioned him about Tina Peters, who was a Mesa County, Colorado clerk who was indicted in March on charges that she helped copy election systems. So you can see there's a little bit more detail there. FBI acknowledged what a warrant was served, they said, but they declined to elaborate, right? The FBI, it's an ongoing investigation. We can't talk about any of this. FBI acknowledged that a warrant was served, but declined to elaborate. FBI said, without commenting on this specific matter, I can confirm that the FBI was at that location executing a search warrant authorized by a federal judge. Spokesperson for the Bureau's Denver field office said in an email, Washington Post called Mike Lindell. Lindell told them that he was not involved in the copying of Mesa County's election management system, and he did not meet Peters until she attended a, quote, cyber symposium that he held in South Dakota in August 2021. He says, I have no idea what went on then. I have nothing to do with it. FBI's actions against him, you know, are uh, talking about voting gear, and he's got all sorts of different uh, conversations that he's having, of course, about the election. And so Mike Lindell is yet another one of Trump's allies who faces the MAGA Republican onslaught that has been percolating all around the country. Steve Bannon had previously told us, breaking news on his show, that there were 35 others who also had subpoenas, just like the one we read through, delivered to them, seizing their property, demanding their testimony, and so on and so forth. And Harmeet Dillon is an attorney who was communicating about all of this when she was on the Tucker Carlson show. And she said the following. She said, look, we've seen exactly what we just talked about, those subpoenas with big, broad requests, really hard to dial in on what felony are they talking about? Who are they talking about? What's the scope of the charges? What is this all about? Here's Harmeet Dillon explaining that many of her clients have gotten the same treatment that Mike Lindell has. Well, the truth is that a few days ago, a political reporter called several people and said, hey, have you heard or have you been served yet? The FBI is going to be serving 50 approximately search warrants 50. and or subpoenas on Trump supporters. And then. You know so is Michael and Dell in that list? Bannon and the 35 people that he had already talked about. Now, Mike Lindell is added. There are 15 others who's waiting for the knock at the door or the seizure of their chicken nuggets. You no, know, within 24 hours of that, two of our clients, three of our clients actually did either get search warrants or subpoenas. And these subpoenas are extremely broad. They're from the capital siege section of the United States uh, Department of Justice. Whatever that is. DC office. And they ask for broad categories of documents. They ask for all communications dating from a month before the election until a month, two months after the election. And they ask for all communications regarding uh, do dozens of people. And the categories are alternate electors, uh, fundraising around irregularities around the election, and also a, a uh, rally that happened before the January 6th uh, situation at the Capitol. Now, many of those things, Mike Lindell and many others that we've talked about here were involved in, right? And actually, we talked about this on our morning walk and talk, which is available for locals members and YouTube members. But we went through at length a big conversation about what the heck was I just talking? Okay, so <sighs> Harmeet Dillon, I saw something in the chat just caught me off, off guard. Philip Smith says, Seth Robert. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Our morning walk and talk. Gosh, it took me a minute. Our morning walk and talk. Mike Lindell is the subject of, well, let's go back to Harmeet Dillon. So the Save America rally that happened. And so basically most of this activity, if not all of it, is protected by the First Amendment. And the United States Department of Justice is telling reporters about the search warrant. That's what I was going to say. Mike Lindell was here in Arizona. That's the thought. That's the point that I was trying to make. Carrie Lake, remember, was suing uh, Katie Hobbs over the election because of the electronic ballot machines and all of that stuff that took place in Maricopa. But there was rumors about who was funding the lawsuit, right? Who was hiring the lawyers in order to kind of put this whole thing, move this whole needle forward.
And Mike Lindell was one of the individuals who was behind one of those lawsuits, apparently, right? There were rumor mills, oh, Mike Lindell is in there. He's in the federal court filing all of these things. And so now that Harmeet is talking about the dual slates of electors and the possibility of sort of, you know, fundraising some of these efforts and building a secondary uh, sort of line of defense in case, let's say, for example, Mike Pence didn't, you know, didn't actually... Uh, you know, declare the election to be complete, right? All of those things would be now fair game. They would default back to an alternative slate of electors. We've talked all about this, right? I'm not saying that, that, that it should have gone one way or the other for the YouTube censors out there, but there were a lot of the debates about are there legal maneuvers in order to do this? And the bulk of the courts, the bulk of everybody said, no, you can't really do any of that stuff. And they didn't entertain most of these things really on the basis of standing. But Harmeet Dillon is now sort of detailing, right? Her clients are getting the same types of subpoenas that mirror a lot of what Mike Lindell was doing. And so it makes sense that he might get one of the subpoenas that is from this same type of inquiry, which is the Capitol Siege Group over there at the DOJ. ...and subpoenas before they're executed. There's no other explanation for this. And I think the reason for this is to instill Still fear into yes. Donald Trump supporters and into those who would challenge election irregularities right before an upcoming election, Tucker. So this is really outrageous abuse by the DOJ, and it is illegal for the DOJ to leak this information to the media, Tucker. So two problems there. One, of course, they are infringing on perfectly free speech, what you're allowed to do. You can get out there. You're uh, supposed to be allowed to say, I don't think that the government function that we're debating here is operating appropriately. And we think that there are room for improvements in any system, whether it's delivering electricity, whether it's the school system, whether it's the healthcare system. Why would the election system be outside of that area of debate? Why can't you question this? And why can't you file lawsuits and investigate all of these things without coming under the microscope of an active DOJ? Right. You have the free speech in America or you used to. So you could participate in those ways. But Harmeet Dillon is saying that not only is you know, are her clients getting this, but now we see Mike Lindell apparently is as well. Let's wrap up here. If you alone have three personal clients who've been raided, then it tells you the scale. Of, I can't believe decent liberals are sitting back and allowing this to happen. This will wreck the country, and they're saying nothing about it. It's really shocking to me. Harmeet All right, and that was Harmeet Dillon. I think that Tucker ends it after that. So Harmeet Dillon explaining she's got clients herself that have also been raided, served subpoenas, had their cell phones seized. Don't know if they were at restaurants themselves, but it is something that we're seeing spreading all throughout America. Now, there's also more here. We see that in Arizona, a lot of people are sort of having fun over the Mike Lindell seizure, the raiding of his cell phone. Katie Hobbs, one of the worst candidates in the country running for office, posted this after the news was breaking, saying, breaking, the FBI seized the phone of Mike Lindell over the course of the search warrant. And Katie Hobbs said, oh, you mean this phone? Showing Mike Lindell taking a photograph with Carrie Lake and sort of implying that this is sort of a dangerous association for the two. And I'm not so sure that that's going to go uh, all over that well for uh, for Katie Hobbs. I think that, you know, Mike Lindell seems like a pretty lovable guy, helps a lot of people sleep all across uh, the fruited plains of Arizona. And so Carrie Lake responded to that. But you can see, you know, if Mike Lindell is somebody who they can smear, if they can if they can drag him down just a little bit, what does that do? That gives him a wide opening to drive a truck through to smear everybody else that he's been associated with, right? So they'll go out to the people on the top, the people who are sort of uh, you know influencers for certain movements. Mike Lindell's running advertisements all over the place. He's you know sort of championing a cause, funding different organizations and efforts all across America. And so if they can smear him, if they can take him down, they can then smear everybody else who was associated with him. It's guilt by association. And Katie Hobbs, the coward who won't even debate Carrie Lake, multiple offers, just won't do it. She just hides behind her Twitter account and posts things like that. Whereas Mike Lindell and others, right, they're out in front of people speaking for the things that they believe in. They're out there debating the issues, whereas the cowardly Katie Hobbs just hides behind her Twitter account. So pathetic, honestly. I don't even you know, know how she's in the running. I don't even know why she wants to be governor if she doesn't want to talk. But uh, that's what's happening out there, all in an attempt to smear Mike Lindell. Now, after Mike Lindell had his cell phone raided, 
Like many other cases we've covered here, we have crime scene photos, which did finally leak out. The FBI has been very proud of their efforts on this one. Lots of celebrations taking place over there at the FBI. And so let's take a look at some of these photos that came in from the FBI crime scene. Here we've got uh, the first one here. Here's the boys who actually took the items from Mike Lindell. Here's the esteemable FBI agents. <sighs> Job well done, boys. Seized those pillows. I mean, nobody really should have those, that amount of fluff in their pillows. So very proud. That's going to be the one that they put up on the uh, refrigerator. Tremendous job, boys. Saving America out there. We had a couple more coming in here from the crime scene. Let's see what else was here. A couple other crime scene photos. Uh, Hardy's is now serving warrants where they're at. Uh, the FBI has decided that they're now going to be rebranding themselves as Fed Bath and Beyond. Uh, Mike Lindell might be in you know, for a little bit of trouble out there. Fed Bath and Beyond, it's a pretty established brand. You know, they might have some competing pillows and they've got slippers and they've got can they got a lot of stuff there. So it's hard to know, you know, Mike Lindell might be in for some serious trouble. We had another one here. Oh, the Fed Boys. Yeah, with the pillows. Uh, the Fed Boys who were going out there to probably frame some more people for kidnapping plots out there with their pillows, little pillow fight. Yeah, it's very cute. Yeah, it's very cute. A little sleepover. A little FBI sleepover, slumber party over there. Yeah, you know, hey, shout out to Brandon Caserta. You know, Brandon Caserta just started a Twitter account. Remember him? He got, he got uh, framed and acquitted by the FBI agents. Probably looked a lot like these guys. Fed boys. Uh, let's see what else here we had. Oh, here's the, uh, look at this. Here's the, here's the final haul. I mean, this is what they were taking out of the MyPillow factory. Uh, I mean... Honestly, nobody should have that many pillows. Uh, it's outrageous. Look at all those. Look at all those pillows. I mean, where did he get all of those? How does somebody accumulate that much comfort? They needed a dolly uh, to, to, to cart it on out of there. Unbelievable. So uh, the FBI, obviously, you know, hopefully they're proud of themselves. Hopefully they're waking up. Maybe they'll sleep better tonight. Maybe they'll wake up tomorrow. And they'll be nice and rested. You know, they'll be all sort of peaceful and they'll wake up and they'll say, gosh, you know, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. And um, suddenly I'm wondering why I was wrecking the Constitution. And maybe they say, uh, today I decide to change my ways. All because of the comfortable my pillow, pillows and the slippers that they have seized. One can only hope maybe they'll get a restful sleep and they'll leave America alone. But the crime scene photos from Mike Lindell are, of course, available. And the FBI will continue to be a laughingstock.